A couple of days ago, Sega revealed the last 10 games they plan on releasing on the Sega Genesis Mini Console coming out on September 19th, but they surprised everyone when they announced two additional bonus games. In this video, we're going to take a look at the final 12 games being released. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. If you're watching this video, you likely already know what the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive Mini is and when it's being released. September is right around the corner and I don't know about you, but I'm really excited to get my hands on this console. Sega has done an awesome job marketing this and they appear to be making all the right moves with this launch. That being said, let's just jump right into the games. First game on this list is Virtua Fighters 2. Virtua Fighters 2 was originally released in North America for the Genesis on March 4th, 1997. As most know, Virtua Fighters is a fighting game developed and published by Sega, and this version of the game was a 2D remake made specifically for the Genesis based off the arcade versions released a couple years earlier. I've never actually played this version of Virtua Fighters, but I'm very familiar with the franchise and have played many other installments. I'd never seen any Virtua Fighters game as a 2D fighter, and although this is a vastly watered down version of the original game, it does look like it would be a lot of fun and it's welcome to see, especially since the only other fighting game announced is Street Fighter. This version of the game saw additional releases as part of the Sega Mega Drive collection released on the PS2 and PSP, as well as on the Wii Virtual Console. Next on the list we have the game Alicia Dragoon. This is a side-scrolling platforming game developed by Game Arts and published by Sega. Alicia Dragoon did not have a huge marketing effort put behind it, and as a result it didn't do overly well in sales in either North American markets or the Japanese market. The game is pretty much the player taking control of Alicia, who is on a quest to save the world and avenge her father. She's able to fire lightning from her hands, and has the ability to summon a number of beasts to help her along the way. There are eight levels in this game where you can take your main character through by jumping over gaps and defeating any enemies that cross your path. At the end of each level, you have to defeat a boss in order to progress further into the game. The game was never officially re-released on any future consoles or game collections. Overall, this game looks really interesting. I've never really seen it before, and I'll be adding it to the list of games that I'm going to play through as soon as this console is released. Columns is the next game on the list, and this is one I wasn't expecting, but I'm really happy to see it make the list. Columns is a multiplayer upright puzzle game where you try to match three of the same tiles in order to rack up a high score. This game was originally created back in 1989, and earlier versions were then ported over to computer platforms and the Atari ST. By the beginning of the 90s, the rights were sold to Sega, who then took it and ported it to a bunch of different Sega consoles. Although the idea of a match 3 puzzle video game has been around before this, I tend to think this game is what inspired many of the current popular similar themed mobile games that are on the market today. This game was incredibly popular and as a result a ton of sequels and spin-offs were produced and released, most having great success in the marketplace. If you're looking for a fun multiplayer puzzle game just to sit down and play with a friend, you found a good one with columns. Game 4 on this list is Dynamite Heady. Dynamite Heady was a game that was developed by Treasure, who most of you guys would know from games like Gunstar Heroes or the later released Mischief Makers for N64. This game is a platformer that saw its release on the Genesis in 1994. You are a puppet by the name of Heady, and you're on a mission to stop the evil puppet from taking over the world. Your main weapon in this game is your character's head, which can be thrown at enemies or even used to help pull the character to hard to get areas, or even move objects. As time goes on in the game, you will find different heads or masks which essentially act as power-ups, allowing you to gain different special effects. This game has a fairly steady following and received critical acclaim, and although I personally have never played it, I can definitely see why. The gaming mechanics look great, and it just looks like an overall fun game. There is still, to this day, a lot of people who would argue that this is one of the best games to ever be released on the Sega Genesis. Strider is the next game on our list, and I can't say that I'm surprised by this at all. Strider has been one of the games Capcom has been pushing out a ton this past year. We recently had the Arcade 1UP Final Fight Cabinet feature this game, as well as the Capcom Home Arcade Unit, which will have the arcade version of this game also. Strider for the Genesis was one of the best ports from the original coin-op game, and the controls are pretty close to playing the original arcade game. Still to this day, Strider sits in as one of my top 5 games released by Capcom ever. 
It is a side-scrolling platformer where you take Strider and progress through each stage defeating enemies and avoiding damage. The game was considered to be so good that consumers who didn't even own a console would go out and buy a Sega Genesis console just so they could play and experience this game at home. If you haven't played this game, then you need to give it a try. This is not one you want to miss out on. A fan favorite, Kid Chameleon takes the next spot on the list and many people are super happy about this. Kid Chameleon is a side-scrolling platform game that was released and developed by Sega in 1992. You play as Kid Chameleon progressing through a bunch of different levels. You need to defeat enemies and watch out and get through a bunch of different obstacles that may be in your way. You are working your way through each level to obtain a flag which will then help you progress to the next level. One of the big differences in this game is that the game implements different teleporters throughout each level which can warp you to not only different parts of the same level, but to different levels entirely, making the game feel less linear and more challenging. The game has over 100 levels in it, but only about half of those are considered to be the main path required to get you to the end of the game. The game was considerably a long playthrough and it did not implement any password or saving features, so I'm hoping Sega takes note from Nintendo and implements a save state feature to help new players make their way through this one. Light Crusaders is next on the list and it's the third game on the console developed by Treasure. This is an action-adventure game that was developed for the Genesis and released in 1995. This game has an isometric viewpoint which gives you the feeling of a three-dimensional play area being displayed in 2D. The game is a mixture of action, platforming, as well as puzzle solving. The main player will travel from town to town and encounter a number of dungeons to play through defeating enemies and solving puzzles. There are mixed reviews for this game with some people really enjoying it and others comparing it to other similar games and being disappointed. The game isn't one that I'm particularly excited for and likely won't make my list of games to try, but that's just me. Monster World 4 is the 8th game in the list and it's an interesting pick. The game was originally released in Japan in 1994 and didn't see an official North American release until 2007 on the PlayStation 2 and then again in 2012 on the Wii Virtual Console, Xbox Live Arcade and the PlayStation Network. This is the sixth game in the Wonder Boy Monster World series. It is a mix of platforming, action adventure, as well as it has some RPG gaming elements to it. You travel through the game defeating enemies using your sword and shield. Throughout the game you can acquire upgrades and armor to beef up your character and to help progress towards the end. This looks like an interesting game and a large number of people have not played it, so I can see why Sega decided to add it to the roster of games for the Genesis Mini. Eternal Champions will make the third and final fighting game that made the list for the console. This game was developed and released by Sega in 1993 and was one of the very few fighting games that were actually developed for specific use on a home console, rather than most others that were simply ported over from an arcade game. As a result, gameplay feels much more natural and player controls feel fairly good. Sega released this game to try to capitalize on the success of other fighting franchises such as Mortal Kombat or the Street Fighter series. The game did well enough to warrant a sequel later released on the Sega CD and a couple of other spin-offs, but we really didn't hear or see much from the Eternal Champions brand much after that. Road Rash 2 was a game that I saw a bunch of people wanting in some of my previous videos and they'll be happy to know that it has officially made the list as the 40th game for the console. What is there to say about Road Rash 2? It is a staple in everyone's Genesis collection. It blows my mind to this day that EA has not really done that much with the franchise. It has a huge player base that would love to see this series brought back on modern consoles. If you've never played this game, you essentially race other people on motorcycles with the ability to kick and hit other racers making them fall off their bikes or crash. It is just a generally fun game to play and is a must have for the console. Now as I mentioned earlier, Sega surprised everybody with the announcement of two additional games, bringing the total collection to 42 titles. The first of the two bonus games is none other than the exceptionally rare Sega version of Tetris. This had an incredibly limited Japan release and never came to North America. The game had to be recalled after Nintendo gained the exclusive rights to Tetris on home console gaming. The Sega version wasn't anything special or much different than the Nintendo released versions other than some basic graphical overlays and the color palette used. Overall, I think this is a cool little bonus game to get on the console. And the final game to make the list for the Sega Genesis Mini is Darius. This is an interesting release since the game never had an official Sega Genesis release, 
The arcade game was really popular in the late 80s and was ported over to the Game Boy Advance in 2002 as Darius R. The game is a 2D horizontal scrolling shoot 'em up. In arcades, this game was actually displayed with three CRT televisions to accommodate the way they wanted the game to be displayed. I've never had a chance to play this, but this is one of the ones I'm looking forward to trying out. Let me know in the comments section below if you're excited for the release of the Sega Genesis Mini. Were you disappointed with the last 12 games released? I want to hear from you and let me know your thoughts down below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this, hit that like button and turn on notifications. But that's all I've got for you for this video. Thank you so very much for watching and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.